What's up, everybody? This is Randy. Thanks for joining me. Pretty excited today because I'm going to be working on my sketchbook again. And I'm going to revisit a painting that I did last year. So I painted these uh, holly trees a little less than a year ago when they were green and had green berries on them. And I used casein. And I wanted to revisit that subject. So for those who don't know, the Zorn palette is four colors. Yellow ochre, cadmium red, ivory black, and titanium white. I considered swapping out the cadmium red with cadmium orange, but because of the berries, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with the red. So I got a photograph here uh, that I took of our holly trees when the berries were you know, fully ripened. And I just need to kind of select uh, the angle I want to paint this in, sort of a pleasing layout uh, for this rectangular sketchbook. Now, I used Sorol tracing paper to capture the image. And I did that because if I would have just drawn this from scratch, like that, that was gonna really slow down the process for me. I was really more focused on playing with the Zorn palette and seeing what kind of effect I could get overall with that and less about trying to make a perfect replication of this photograph or or this, this image. I kind of just wanted this drawing to give me a rough layout and capture this main pod of berries and, and leaves. It's still a really cool tool and it's definitely a, a good way to speed up the process. The first step for me is gonna to be to put in just a light background. Um, I want it to be a little bit of a green tint. And again, with the Zorn palette, your greens are made by mixing uh, yellow ochre and ivory black. It gives you sort of a, a greenish gray. And I think that these tones will really look greener next to the, the, the berries, the cad red. I'm adding a little bit of water in here. Wanted this to be a little bit transparent, uh, not completely opaque, uh, because I was hoping that the drawing that I just laid down would, would show through this layer. And I think this was a little more opaque than I expected. So it's just a lesson learned. Next time I'll probably you know draw on top of my tracing a little bit uh, to, to make sure that the line work will show through. At any rate, this just kind of seals in the background removes all the white from the from the page gives me a starting point uh, to start laying in uh, darker tones even though these these leaves are kind of bright in the sunlight here i'm going to block them in with sort of a medium um, green so again it's a mixture of yellow ochre and ivory black I'm going to block in all the big areas where i see the bright leaves and that'll give me a, a base to then start to build up darker and lighter tones on top of that and once I get that layer down, I immediately started going in with a little bit of a darker green. So again, same color combination, just with more black mixed in. And I'm just going to block in the major shadow areas. And pretty much anything that wasn't one of the primary leaves or pods of berries in the foreground, I'm kind of just making up. I do have the photograph off to the side and I can reference it. But I'm not being too careful about replicating every single detail. I've been... I've been watching a lot of James Gurney's plein air painting videos, and I really am learning a lot from him as far as the approach of not trying to paint every single detail that you see in nature. It's, you know, it's very frustrating to get caught up in trying to paint every leaf of every tree or every petal of every flower or every, in this case, twig and, and berry, <laughs> so to speak. So I really have to force myself to almost ignore the details and really just go for trying to capture the, you know, an impression of what I'm seeing. I think I was fairly successful in that task with this painting. As you'll see, I think in the end, it really does come together and it's pretty exciting uh, to be able to, to let go a little bit and just, you know, try to go for a feeling rather than trying to capture every single thing exactly the way you see it. You know, it's really fun to go ahead and start putting in some cad red. This is pretty much Cadmium red right out of the tube. I did mix in a tiny bit of yellow ochre to give it a little bit of an orange. And I might have put in a little, a tiny, tiny bit of titanium white too. It's still very early on in this process. And I'm just, you know, basically blocking in, probably being too, more careful than I need to be with the berries. I probably should just be a little looser here with blocking in this, this red. But I'm just identifying the red zones and kind of trying to capture the silhouette of, of the berries as I see them in the photograph. Now, like acrylic, uh, casein dries really fast, and only minutes after laying down a layer, you can go right back in. Here, I'm working back on, on top of that medium green that we first laid down with a lighter tone of, of green. So this is uh, the yellow ochre, the ivory black, and a little bit of titanium white. You know, obviously very little black, but 
you kind of have to mix it up and, and get a feel for what these combinations look like. And here I'm just kind of working in some zones within the leaves, like some of the veins that are in the leaves and some of the edges and trying to establish a little bit of, of where the lighter and darker areas of these leaves are going to be. Now, once I get through the, the pass with the lighter green, um, now I'm working with a little bit of a darker green uh, than the medium uh, tone that we first blocked in. And I'm just going in and trying to, and just taking a quick pass over the whole painting, um, working in some of these these areas that are obvious to me uh, that need to be darker. I felt pretty good about where the painting was going, but there always, almost always, is a point where you start to worry a little bit, or at least just get frustrated with with the way things are looking. Um, and this is that point, right? This is that middle ground of I think we had a good start, and we're off to the races, and then right here in the middle it just feels like things are a little bit hairy and i still have a lot of hope that this is going to come together and i kind of feel confident that it will um this is that middle part where you just have to trust you just have to trust the process just keep pushing through you know things look a little bit muddy they're a little bit haphazard there's definitely some things that i i feel like i've made some mistakes along the way here but i know that with casein just like acrylic well any paint really i mean there's always a, a way to recover and um, I know that it's going to come together in the end. Now, after I go back with the darker green on the leaves, um, uh, now I'm, I'm going back and working in some darker red uh, on the berries. And this is where the berries really start to, to, to come out of the painting and our, the, the details really start to come together. And uh, again, I'm not copying the, the photograph exactly. And I, I think I would drive myself crazy if I tried to. Now, if I, I could be extremely meticulous and paint every single berry exactly the way it, it sort of sits in the photograph. But here, I, there's no need to do that, right? I'm not trying to replicate um, perfectly what I'm seeing. I'm just trying to get a feel for um, what the scene looks like. Now, immediately after adding in the darker shading, to define the berries. I went in with some lighter cadmium red and titanium white, little pink, pinkish color to sort of bring in uh, the highlights and some of the, some of the lighting effects that uh, really make these berries start to feel round. And um, again, this is really fun. I'm glancing at the photo, trying to see just the basic idea of where the light is hitting these berries and then just working around the painting. As you can see here, I'm using a fairly large brush um, that's another thing I wanted to mention. I probably should have mentioned earlier. I don't really care about my brushes that much. I, I should, you know, I don't even know half of my brushes if they're natural or synthetic. I happen to know that this brush is a synthetic brush. And I wanted to mention that because apparently casein has ammonia in it and can be pretty harsh on natural brushes, uh, natural fiber brushes. So if you're going to use casein and you really care about your brushes, uh, you, you probably should. Now you should make sure you're using synthetic brushes and, and wash them thoroughly afterwards. Now if you stare at these things for long enough, you start to notice things that maybe you didn't in, in at first glance. And what I noticed was that the leaves had a little bit of a yellow tinge to them. And I'm probably exaggerating it here uh, with this color palette, but I'm definitely happy I uh, decided to take some of this yellow ochre and kind of add a little bit of depth to the leaves by putting in some of these yellow highlights. I really do feel like it added to the overall piece in the end. Now, it probably would have been a lot more dramatic to save the whitest whites and highlights for the, the very end, but I couldn't help myself. I decided to go ahead and take a pass with these. And these leaves have a very waxy feel. If you've ever seen a holly tree up close, they're extremely slick and the sun really does bounce off of them. And Although it was a little bit jarring to start adding this, I feel like, you know, again, I just had to trust the process and trust my intuition that um, that this was really going to make sense uh, in the end once I added all these highlights in. It's a really fun step to take to add in these final little details that really sort of pull everything together and really sweeten the painting and sort of pull everything all together. And uh, once I got done with all the white highlights on the leaves, um, you know, then I came back with a, a much lighter uh, red color to uh, pick out a few spots on the berries that really were, you know, getting the brightest uh, reflections. I also took uh, a little bit of white, very, very small touch of yellow ochre in this. And 
sort of picked out uh, some edges of leaves that were also picking up the sunlight and creating these these bright reflections on the edges of the leaves. And I think that really helped uh, pull this all together and make the leaves sort of pop off the background. And one of the last things I noticed, there's actually some red reflections on the leaves from the berries. And it's interesting, the things that you, you pick up on if you just take your time and really, really look at something. I didn't notice this for the longest time, uh, which tells me I have a little bit of work to do when it comes to observing. The last few steps here are just adding in some darker shadows in the background that closer match what I was seeing in the photograph and help to create more focus on the leaves and the berries and kind of pop them again, pop them off the background, which I think works pretty well. There's a little bit of um, yellow ochre in this, but not much. It's mostly black. And at the very, very end here, I decided to try to capture some of the sunlight effects that were happening on the ground and in the background of the photo, just to try to get the feeling of some of that dappled light that I, I could see on the ground. So yeah, this thing's pretty much done here. I'm just going to sign it and, and hopefully in the final shots, you can see the overall feeling that was captured by using this palette in comparison to the first one that I did. I think that it really does have sort of a timeless feel to it. And I'm getting to that point where I really can see the potential of the Zorn palette. And I feel like I'm, I'm mastering it a little bit more each time I try. So let me know what you guys think about this. I'm hopeful that this is helpful to you all and that you enjoy these videos and that you're getting something out of it. Um, let me know. I'd really like to hear from you. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, see you next time. Peace.